Jane doesn't want to see you, honey. He doesn't want you to visit him anymore. No, no, I mean, you must have, you must have just misunderstood what he said, you know, or, or wrote. He was very specific. He typed it out for me twice. It was perfectly clear. Why wouldn't she want me in there? I mean, that's, that's, that's nuts. That's, that's nuts. I'm going to go in there and I'm asking him myself. Honey, you don't want to do that. Look. Uh, Shane. Dr. Bauer says that you don't want to see me anymore. Can you please tell him that that's wrong? Can you tell him that that's not true? You questioned the staff, the patrons, everyone who was at the old mill in the night that Lori and Brad had their dinner date? And the night that she disappeared? Yeah, almost everyone. I got to the Mater D. I uh, tracked down every customer I could through credit card receipts, but a couple of tables paid cash. Okay. So what's the picture they're painting about Lori and Brad's argument? It's 50-50. Half of them say that Lori was breaking up with Brad, and the other half say it was the other way around. <laughs> Everybody agrees they were both upset. Great. We have to talk to Brad Green. We have to hear his side of the story so we can start poking holes in it. It would be helpful if he if he answered your phone call. <sighs> no kidding. You know, I have a feeling I'm going to have to stop by this guy's office at Spalding or go to his house, which I want to avoid because I know it's going to make the man defensive. Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you try your Peggy Niedermeyer routine again? You know, the old college roommate who stops by. Hey. No, 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 no. You guys, we talked about this, okay? No false identities, no willful misrepresentation. Right. Whatever. <laughs> I love the way you guys hire me for legal advice and you completely ignore what I say. That's not true. We do. We listen to you. Yeah, and then we ignore what you say. Blake, let's move on to the other, other pieces of the agenda here. Um, I, I did call Lori's mom and I said, we need to go through Lori's things ASAP, but she hasn't called me back yet. Did, did she say that Lori kept a journal? She said she kept one when she was younger. She's not sure if she still wrote in it. Oh, I hope she calls you back tonight. So do I. Because the sooner we go through her things, the sooner we'll learn about Brad Green. But there is one thing I know about that guy. I am sure of it. He is bad news. I can feel it. Brad Green is a great guy, Gus. Brad Green is an adulterer. A serial adulterer, Alan. Oh, now, he's a very sophisticated, wealthy corporate type who's used to getting his way. Now, I'd be very surprised if he didn't have a wandering eye. Well, I think it's a little more than his eye that went wandering, okay? Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now, would we? Look, it's the classic scenario. You got a, a very successful business guy, has an affair with a young hot chick in the office. He wants to break it off eventually, but she threatens to go public. Yes, but he thought his wife knew about the affair. That's why this threat wouldn't matter to okay, him. Okay, well, maybe he thought this was going to be it. This was going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Who knows? I mean, what, imagine what this wife could soak this guy for in divorce court. Mm. What do I know? Maybe the girl had something over him. I don't know, but we got a missing girl here. I got to track her down, okay? Because people do not just vanish into thin air. Olivia! Spencer out of her suite tonight? No. Well, then who did? I don't know. Don, she owns half this hotel. She didn't move out of here without somebody knowing about it. Now, who did? Philip. Is there a problem? Where is she? Who? Olivia? You're her partner. She must have told you. Thank you, Andy. She must have told me what? Where she went. Went where? She's gone. Her suite is empty. It's completely cleared out. Where did she go? What? You, she didn't say anything to you about going anywhere. No! When was the last time you talked to her? Last night, I, I, Jeffrey and I 
got up with her half the night. You know, she was totally freaked out finding that doll head in the crib. I know, I know all that. Uh, Mr. Spaulding? Yeah. Uh, Andy told me you were asking after Miss Spencer. Yeah. I just found this note from her behind the desk for you. Thank you. Gus, are you sure that I couldn't get you a beer or something? No, thank you. Listen, now, I need to get back down to Spaulding, okay? I need to interview some of the employees. Really? Why? Because Harley's to talk to everyone. Harley's talked to every. When did this happen? The day before you did. Wait a minute now. Who, who would have let her do that? I did. Don't you remember? You told me to give Harley whatever access she needed. No. That was when she was working for Mrs. Jensen, briefly. And then, that, see, that was a 48-hour window before the girl was an actual missing person. This is a police matter now. Do you understand? If she's off the case, why is she asking questions? I don't know, because she's kind of working for Mrs. Jensen a little bit, sort of, kind of. Why is that? I don't know, because she's got a big heart. Hmm. Look, I, she has this crazy little notion that she can solve this case quicker than I can. Really? Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's nutty. Well, it doesn't seem to be crazy enough that you... Don't seem to be a little worried about it. Listen, Alan, I am a detective, okay? I, I have a thousand more resources at my fingertips than she could ever have. Still, you seem to be a little worried that she might beat you to the punch. No, I am not worried about anything like that, okay? This is a missing girl. That's a very serious matter. I have to find that girl. That's enough drive for me. I don't need a little competition with my fiancé to... Look, if she needs a lesson on who wears the pants in the family, then a lesson is what she's gonna get. You know, I think it's really strange that Mrs. Jensen hasn't called you back. Maybe, mm. maybe something's wrong with her phone machine. Maybe, maybe she didn't even get a message. Mm. Evening, ladies. Burning the midnight oil, I see. Ah! The Jensen case. You need something? You need a PI? Or an attorney? I'm licensed to practice now. Yes, you are, so I hear you passed the bar first time, too. Good girl, Mel. Way to go. Girl? Of course, I never doubted it for one second, which is why I brought you this. What is that? It's a gift to say congratulations. Gifts are usually wrapped. You know, I never understood that about wrapping paper, you know? The first thing you do is you just rip it off anyway. It's kind of like, uh, well, it's kind of like women's lingerie, isn't it? As opposed to men's lingerie? Okay, you guys, stop it. Mr. O'Neill brought me a gift completely unsolicited out of the kindness of his heart. He's making an effort to be human. We have to encourage that behavior. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Um, this is very sweet. All right, don't get all sacrament about it. Just open the damn thing, would you? Okay. Hey. Wow. <laughs> Just out of law school, I interned with a judge, Justice Stephen Brackett, possibly the most intelligent man that I've ever met. And not only did he impart some of his wisdom to me, but he also imparted this statue so that I would always remember the most important thing about law is not winning or losing, but about fairness and doing the right thing. We heard that about you. Justice Brackett also made me promise that I would one day pass this along to a neophyte attorney with the one condition that he or she be as brilliant and as deserving of it as I was. Of course, uh, I was never able to find that person. Never. Unthinkable. You're the closest thing to it, Mel, so there you go. It's all yours. Oh, with the one condition that you, in your turn, pass it on to another attorney who's deserving of it. Absolutely, I will. Thank you. Jeffrey, this means a lot to me. Well, it's quite a place you got here. Let's have a look around, shall we? Are you sure you got enough locks on the door? Did he manage to keep you out? That's cute. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the whole thing is cute. The whole thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, Harley's Angels, chicks with guns, you know, cops light shtick. It's all good. It's very good. But you can only coast on an image for so long, you know. After that, you're going to have to cough up the goods. And from the looks of things, mm, you're having a rocky start, aren't you? Meaning what exactly? Well, the Green Jensen case. 
missing some of the facts, aren't you? We are not. Which ones? Well, that's for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> you know, maybe you should stick to the social work part of this endeavor. I think that'd be better for you, because it's a big, bad world out there. And if you make a mistake, it could cost you. Hmm. Have you tried a lot of homicides in your day there, Jeffrey? Yeah, quite a few. You ever done the one where the victim was bludgeoned to death by the scales of justice? It's quite messy, I believe. Very. Shane? Come on, answer me. Come on, now, let's go out and no, no. Honey, he doesn't want to see you. Okay, Shane, do you see Dr. Bauer seems to think that you don't want to see me anymore. He seems to think that you want me to leave. Do you want me to leave, Shane? Do you want me to leave, yes or no? Well, it's just because you're tired, right? And you know what? That's fine. That's totally cool. You can take a nap. I'm going to go home, and I'll come back tomorrow, and it'll... Why are you doing this? Let's go, sweetie. Shane, why are you doing this? I just... I need... That's right, she's gone. He gave you the boot, didn't he? I would have done the same thing. Wow, um, how do you work with such hot-headed partners, Mel? All this hostility and all because I gave you a gift. And then trashed what we do. And then threatened us. What threat? Make a mistake and it'll cost you. That wasn't a threat. That was professional courtesy. You know, I really, really like you girls, really. And I really appreciate what you're trying to do here. I think it's a noble endeavor. But the Jensen Green case is a police matter now. You can't stop us from working the case. No, I can't. But I can tell you that if you do anything illegal or if you cut any corners and I catch you and... I will catch you. I'll have you up on obstruction of justice faster than you can say pedicure. Oh, that is so patronizing. You know what, Jeff? That's not going to be a problem. No? No, because that's why I'm part of the team. So we do everything by the book. Which reminds me, I hope you're not crossing any lines. Like, say, for instance, harassing my associates. Entrapping them, trumping up charges in hopes of scaring us away. Because then I'd be compelled to slap you with a malicious prosecution suit. And from what I hear, that can ruin a DA's career. The student takes on the teacher. So very good, Mel Booker. <laughs> I know you think you can solve Lizzie's problems and ours and put everything right with the world, but you can't. I have to put my child first now, and that means getting away from Springfield as far as possible. Do not look for me. If you do, I will only run again. Take care of Lizzie. She is the one who needs you now, and most of all, take care of yourself. I'm sorry it has to be this way, but it does, Olivia. But where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to go find her and bring her back. But she doesn't... Yeah, Ralph, this is Philip Spaulding. Yes, Mrs. Spaulding. Um, listen, uh, my, uh, my daughter... Your daughter? Did something happen to Lizzie? No, uh, not Lizzie. Um, um, uh, it's... Uh, look, Olivia Spencer is missing. And, uh, what, no, she's not missing. She, she's gone, and I need you to find her. Um, and I want you to take every available man that you have and put it on this. I don't care what you have to do. Run her plates, check her credit cards, whatever. We're not the police, Mrs. Spaulding. We don't really have the authority. Just do it. Put our PIs on it. That's what she does. We have a better idea. Better idea. Hello. Cassie. 
Stacy. Hi, it's me. Olivia. Oh, my God. Where are you? Philip was just here. He read the note you left him, and he's totally freaking out. Look, if you want to talk to him, I'm sure I can still catch him. No. No, Cassie, you can't tell anyone that I called, especially Philip. He's going to try and stop me. So, Shane, help me figure out something here, okay? Marina was upset when you told her to leave. So she cares for you. You know that, right? And you care for her. So what I am wondering is why you would go out of your way to hurt someone like that, unless, of course, you thought you were doing them a favor. I mean, do you think that you're going to be some kind of burden to her? She wants that burden. And she loves you. Are you inside with Shane? I'm checking out the bag you brought him. All those newspaper articles, the yearbook. <laughs> Man, that dude is on every damn page. And it's not just for baseball. Homecoming king, student council, most likely to succeed. And I normally hate goody goodies like that. It's kind of strange, but uh, even I like the guy. What's your point? Shane is like a superhero, man. So? So, so um, imagine being Superman and all of a sudden you can't fly. Or the Terminator. And all of a sudden you can't throw a punch. You can't even nod your head yes or no. And playing baseball? Being a pitcher? Man, forget about it. Okay, yeah, it's been a really hard thing for him. I get that, thanks. Yeah, and it's really hard. By you being here every day, it's actually making it worse. How exactly is having me here, someone who loves Shane, someone who would do anything for him, possibly making things worse? Because when he sees you, he sees stars in your eyes, Marina. But now, all he sees is pity. I don't pity him. But you're here holding his hand day and night, aren't you? No, I'm here helping him. Because we're a team, and we're in this thing together. Maybe. But right now, at this moment, Shane feels about this big in your eyes. Shane's not like that. Hello? He's a guy. To guys, pride is everything. And if that's not enough, man, the dude has got to be going crazy in his mind thinking of what's going to happen in the future. What do you mean in the future? What if he doesn't get better, Marina? Are you going to spend your whole life playing nursemaid? I doubt it. Stop. All right. Look, I'm sorry. I just thought you needed a little reality check. That's yeah, why? It. Because you made such an amazing success out of your life? Look, I was only trying to help you, all right? Okay, well... You know what? You really want to help me? Then help me. Help me find a way to get back into that room. So anyway, I found Brad Green's wife. Name is Marie, but she will not talk to me, not without a lawyer. How the hell did that happen? Well, you can thank your sister. It's a long story. All right, here's a question for you, Frank. Brad Green is a repeat offender with which escort service? Oh, no. Not again. Mm. Please tell me, how, how does your... She's not going to end up being in, in the middle of I every crime investigation that, that we have, or is she? I wish I could say that was the case, Frank. Well, you know, at least there's something good here. She came forward with some information, didn't she? She didn't come forward. No. no. I found a little snippet of a receipt in a waste paper basket at her house and I was I asked her about it she, she practically attacked me and then I I had to send a squad car over there to pick her garbage up off the sidewalk when she put it outside did you find anything only that she's a vegetarian look we need to stay on top of her all right obviously she would know if Brad Green was abusive to any one of her girls mm -hmm. so do you want to go over there and question her no it's a waste of time then I'll send another detective it's a waste of your time Frank it's a waste of your time I'm telling you she hates cops you remember how she stonewalled us in the last investigation well, if she won't talk to a cop, maybe she'll talk to a friend. Maybe an old girlfriend that she thinks she can trust. Yeah? Who'd you have in mind? Darcy. What did Jeffrey mean our facts are wrong? 
Our facts are fine, aren't they? He's just trying to throw us off. Playing with our heads. Or he thought that we would think that he was lying and therefore ignore what he was saying when it was really the truth. And if it's true, I mean that we are wrong. Why does he want us to know that? So, Mel, I hear I should be congratulating you on something else on top of passing the bar. Ah, yes. In just a few short months, I'll be sleep-deprived and covered in spit-up. Good God, why? Well, because that sort of things happen when, you know. What, what, you got indigestion or...? No, I'm pregnant. Oh, you're, you're pregnant? Well, that's better, I, I guess. You didn't know? No, I didn't know. Uh, well, what are you congratulating me on? Well, because you've got your first court case coming up, don't you? Something in family court? Oh, yes, yes. I'm representing the grandparents of a boy in foster care. Yeah. They're trying to gain custody uh, uh, from the foster parents who want to adopt him. Right, well, good. Good job. And you see, you nervous? Nah. It's a piece of cake, open and shut case. Hey, 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 never, never, ever say that. It's always the simple cases that become complicated. Remember that. Okay. Well, thank you for the advice and, and the statue. It looks great in this office. You're quite welcome. I've got to go. So, um, you sure you're not nervous, huh? I'm sure. Just maybe a little bit? Get out of here. Okay. Thanks. Bye, girls. Nervous about what, sweetie? Oh, my first hearing's coming up. Really? Well, you're not nervous, are you? No. Petrified. Harley. I'm hiring you. What? Olivia took off. She just disappeared. She left me this note, and that was it. Um, I don't, I don't, she's so emotional right now, she doesn't know what the hell she's okay. doing. Okay. Can I, can um, I read the note? Yes. You see, she's, I'm, she's not thinking clearly right now. I don't, I don't... Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you'll find her, right? I'm sorry, I can't do that. Olivia, I am so worried about you. I'm fine. Or at least I will be once I get away from here. Look, okay, listen, I know that Lizzie totally freaked you out by putting that doll head in the crib. I know it was very disturbing. And the family's watching her like a hog. She's under house arrest. She's getting the care she needs. It's everything I heard before. You're not alone, Olivia. You're not. You have friends, and you have people that want to help you, okay? I can't have this baby in Springfield, Cassie. Then at least tell me where you are. No, I can't. Philip will pry it out of you. No, he won't. I can't risk him finding me. Well, let's set up a way so we can be in touch. No. Okay. Can you at least give me an indication of when you're going to be back? Well, that's easy. Never. Philip, Olivia specifically asked you not to look for her. Now, I have to respect those wishes. Since when have you ever respected anything about Olivia? Now you're defending her? Listen, I was at her shower, okay? And I saw how excited she is to be a mother. I can see how much she loves that baby. And if this is what she feels she needs to do to protect that child... Right, from Lizzie, who's getting help. Exactly. Right. And I know she's getting help. Right. And I hear she's had a big breakthrough. Right. But you know what? Nobody saw it coming when she engineered Olivia's fall down those stairs. Nobody saw it coming oh, when she put no, that doll nobody, head meaning, in Olivia's... Meaning me. Meaning I didn't see it coming. No, no, don't miss words. Say, say what you mean. I'm not laying any blame, okay? I'm just stating a situation. I love Lizzie. Mm -hmm. I hope she gets better. I hope that she never tries to hurt Olivia again. But what if she does? And what if she succeeds in hurting that child? How will you live with yourself knowing that you let harm come to your own child? Look at what Josh is going through right now with Shane. And that was an accident. Yeah, well, I can't just let her disappear. What if she never comes back? I mean, I... I... It's my child. I have a right to know my child. Do I, do I, or do I not have a right to know my child? Do you okay. think I should have to go through my life without knowing my child? Okay. Without seeing my daughter? Without okay. ever seeing her this face? This is my other thought about it, though, okay? Uh -huh. What if I do find Olivia and I bring her back? 
What then? What, are you going to shackle her to you? Are you going to get all your Spalding lawyers to start a custody proceeding in utero? That'll be pretty, Philip. I have to do something. I have to, I have to, I have to do something. Okay, because it's everything is slipping away from me. Hey, hey, hey! Listen to me. Listen. You have three children uh -huh. already. Who need you, Philip? They need you. You have family and friends. You have a corporation to run. Concentrate on all of that right now, okay? I am sure that in time, Olivia I, will get in touch you with you, I, I, and maybe Lizzie it's, down the road... I, I, don't, I don't give a damn about down the road. I don't care about in time. I want her found, and I want her found now. And if you won't help me, I'll find somebody who will. Man, I didn't even really realize that Darcy knew Eden. Oh, come on, Gus. Don't do this to me. Why? You know damn well that Eden and Darcy used to run in the same circles. And I told Harley no, about I... this a long time ago, and I'm sure she told you. Oh, yeah. Well, she might have mentioned that, but, you know... Hey. I thought it was private. Excuse me. What? I appreciate your discretion. Okay. Now, does anybody else know about this at the station? No. Not, not even the not tiniest little room. No, Frank. Around. No one's talking behind you. You know, your back. You don't get paranoid, okay? And if they did, I would kick. I would. I would hurt Thank somebody. You. Thank you. Right. Now, are you sure you want to do this? You want to use Darcy to get to Eden? What other choice do we have? I don't know. I'm just saying. I, you know. I, you think she'll agree? She feels like she owes me. She lied to me about her past when we first met. We can find another way, Frank. What other way, Gus? I don't know. Look, I'm I'll just, just ask Darcy. If she says no, she says no. Okay, is that right before she calls you a creep and asks you to leave, or right after? There's a girl out there missing, and we need some answers. <sighs> yeah, you're a very brave man, Frank. Yeah, well, maybe brave and stupid. Excuse me. Wow, look at that. Hey, I was, uh, I was just thinking about you. Really? What, tonight? A little surprise, huh? Um, yeah, well, I, uh, might have a surprise for you, too. Where? Wow, well, that, uh, that'll be interesting. Sure, absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Darcy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, uh, she says she has a special night plan for us. Ooh, yeah. Can I make a suggestion, Frank? All right. What you're gonna do is bring flowers, a lot of flowers, because women they can't, they can't resist the flowers, you know. Maybe an ice pack too after she hits you in the nose of the frying pan. Did you hear a word I said? Yeah, I did. And if that's why Shane's keeping me away, if it's because of some, some stupid male pride thing, then that's all the more reason that I need to get back into that room and I need to set him straight. You asked for it. Give me your cell phone. No, you can't use cell phones in here. If you want your boyfriend back, then give me the cell phone. <sighs> Springfield. Cedars Hospital. Yo, is this the hospital? Yo, my brother got into a serious accident. He was working down in, in, in the wood shop down on 5th Street, and the machine cut off his... No, th there's blood everywhere. No, no. No ambulance. No ambulance. We're in the car. We're like five minutes away. Just make sure Dr. Bauer's there. Yeah, that's his doctor, okay? Bobby. Bobby. Don't, don't pass out of me, man. Dr. Ed Bauer to the emergency room, please. Dr. Ed Bauer to the emergency room. Right, I got, got, got to go to the ER. I'll look in on you later, all right?
Yep. That's right. Still here. And you know if that hurts your pride, Shane, that's your problem. See how tough yeah, this is yeah, for you. Yeah, thank you for the but help. But tracking her down, Philip, don't do this. We're out of coffee again. Jeffrey took the last cup. Speaking of which, does anybody think it's strange, Jeffrey O'Neill, showing up after hours? Bit weird? Me. And did he or did he not show an unusually keen interest in the Jensen case? Affirmative. Yes, ditto. Oh, you guys are just paranoid, okay? Jeffrey O'Neill just has a soft spot for me. Jeffrey O'Neill doesn't have a soft spot for his own mother. If he even has a mother. <laughs> I mean, he could be an alien. That would explain why he calls grown women girls. Maybe in his culture he thinks that that's polite rather, rather than politically incorrect and totally obnoxious. What do you think, Carly? Carly. Olivia took off. And she left Philip a note saying don't even try to find me. And the first thing he does is hire me to do just that. We heard. Cubs cap and I actually went by your house tonight and I gathered up all of this stuff because because I thought it would help you you know I thought maybe it would inspire you to work harder and to do better but you know what all of these trophies and all of these uh, all these pennants and all these articles they don't mean a damn thing Shane they don't mean a damn thing What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I just received a phone call. Two phone calls, as a matter of fact, Philip. One from Ralph Jordan, the other one from Margot Vasquez. I guess you're a popular guy. As head of Spalding Security, Ralph was very concerned about the order you gave him tonight. Well, you know what? He, he works for me now, and he's got no right discussing anything that I tell him with you. He's also a very close friend of this family and was concerned about you. Well, then he can write me a memo. He said something about diverting Spalding security to deal with a personal problem involving Olivia. Mm. Yeah, she left town without any advance warning, and I'm, I'm handling it, so it's all right. Using Spalding personnel on I, company I, I said time. I'm handling it. What are you... What are you doing here? How, how did you find me? As I told you, I received two phone calls. The other one was from Margo, who lives very close to here. Uh, she was driving home tonight and saw your car parked out front and became concerned. A hell of a lot of concern out there tonight. I think for good reason. I... I'm fine. Philip, you're breathing heavily. I mean, you're perspiring. Your heart's racing. Are you feeling a, a tingling sensation in your fingers and your feet? Would you please just go? No, I will not just go, Philip, because I want to help you. Listen, um, there's an envelope in my safe in my office. Inside is my power of attorney regarding all things concerning the beacon, okay? 
There's also a note for Beth and Lizzie. Will you make sure they get it? Of course I will. I can't believe you're really leaving. You know, if I thought there was any other way, I... I have to make sure that my little girl's safe. She has to come first. You understand, right? I'm trying. Listen, I, I have to go. I just wish I could be there and see your little girl. Me too. Um, look, you take care of yourself and you, you tell Edmund and, and the kids I said goodbye, okay? I will. You're gonna be in my prayers, Olivia. You and your little one. Thanks, Cassie. Thanks for everything. 